Hello everyone, welcome to Everyday HDR Free Tutorial Friday. I am Blake Rudis and today I'm going to talk about dual processing HDR images. So we've all been in Photomatics working on a exposure bracket series and we've noticed that we have highlight blowouts in certain areas but the rest of the image looks great. And, and that's kind of where I am with this image right now. I think that overall I love it. I love how bright and how open it is. but these areas right here that I'm hovering over have these bright vibrant blowouts so what we tend to get in the habit of is continuing to process the image to get rid of these blowouts and that's all fine and well but today I want to focus on processing an image twice in order to get exactly what you want and then how you can combine them in Photoshop so, this is my image. I've went ahead and processed it you know, pretty liberally. Um, I'm going to go ahead and press process because this is the initial image that we like. Okay. You can see I used a preset there. I have tons of presets, and uh, that's my grounded tree preset. Uh, I usually name my presets after the image I was working on at the time. So, I'm going to file, save as. Now, in Photomatics, if you don't want to cancel out of this image, bring all your brackets back in and wait for it to process them again, there's a little trick you can do to bring, uh, to go back. You can either press Control Z to undo the processing you've done, or you can go up to Process and do Undo Tone Mapping. So once you undo the tone mapping, you can then go to Tone Mapping Fusion and begin tone mapping all over again. So now what I want to do is I, I want to get rid of these highlight blowouts that I have going on in the background and also bring in some blue. Um, I'm not sure if it's the blue that I remember from being in there because it was a very vague day. I was running around like a chicken like crazy because I was actually given one hour to exclusively shoot the Atkins Museum with no visitors. It was absolutely incredible. I had a tripod and everything. Tripod and a museum. I know. Crazy, huh? Um, so I I'm imagining that these areas were more blue, probably because I like the, the brown that's going on here. And blue and brown kind of complement each other. So I'm going to bring some of that blue back in. So the first thing I'm going to do to try and get rid of these highlight areas is bring the smooth highlights down. And that does a great job of getting rid of those areas for the time being. So now I'm going to bring the white point up a little bit to kind of get some more white in those areas. I'll go ahead and bring that all the way up. And we can continue getting rid of those blowouts. Now I'm going to change my lighting adjustments from medium to the actual light adjustment slider and bring it pretty low. That's doing another good job. Now, detail contrast, bring that a little bit down. Okay, we're, we're really starting to get rid of those. Now I'm going to bring in some of that temperature, that blue temperature I was talking about by reducing the temperature slider. The gamma, I'm going to go ahead and drop that a little bit too. Actually, let me increase it a little bit. No, gross. Ugh. Okay, we'll just leave it where it was. We'll go ahead and hit process. Okay, so there, there's the blowouts are still there a little bit, but they aren't that bad. I can I can deal with that. So we're gonna go ahead and pro uh, save this also. I remember that trick, that's a pretty cool trick. If you ever process something it doesn't turn out quite like you wanted it to, just press Control Z and process it all over again. Okay. So now we can go to our blog post and open these up and close out Photomatics. Okay, so we've got our two images here. We've got our blue uh, screen backgrounds, I guess, and we've got the other one. So we're just going to take the one with the blue and drag it and drop it right on top of the other one. Now I'm going to highlight both layers. I'm going to make sure I'm on the move tool and hit the, the little face icon here and then press auto, press OK. And that's going to automatically align my images. It's going to take all the pixels from both images and put them on top of each other so that I've got a perfect image laying on top of the other one. So let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see what it is that we're working with here. So now I'm going to quick get the quick selection tool and I'm going to select these blue areas. 
I love the quick selection tool. You know, I, I don't even know what's going to be happening in Photoshop CS6, but I don't know if I can take it. I don't think my heart's going to let me. Okay, so we got a little bit too much there, so we can just get our quick selection tool and minimize it. You see I use a very small quick selection tool. I like it to be very, very small. I don't select very large areas at once because I don't like how much the, the quick selection tool selects when you have it on large areas because it tends to grab a lot. Okay, now we need to go over to here and grab this area also. You notice I'm going from adding to subtracting. If you've never seen any of my tutorials before, if you press and hold the Alt button as you're using the uh, quick selection tool, it will switch from adding to subtracting. So right there, I just added. Now I'm subtracting by pressing Alt. You don't see me pressing Alt. You just see the thing going from a plus to a minus. But Alt will switch back and forth between adding and subtracting on the fly. And sometimes the quick selection tool works great. Other times you sit here battling with it, selecting and selecting and selecting. So in order to get this area here, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick mask. So I'm going to press the Q button. Now, once you're in quick mask mode, this enables you to paint in black and white in the areas that you want to add and subtract. So I'm going to press the brush key, which is a B, the left bracket key to make that really small. And then I'm going to paint in here with white and I pressed X to switch from black to white on my colors. If you don't have black and white selected, you can always press D and that'll get you the default of black and white. Black is going to add at this point and white is going to subtract based on the way we're selecting the areas. Okay. So now I'm going to press the Q button again, get my selection going, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit the mask. So now I've got these blue areas that I wanted before. Looks great. Now, what I want to do to refine it a little bit is go ahead and select the mask and go into masks and feather that mask a little bit so that it makes it really look like those are kind of just fading right in from one to the other. And that's just bringing in the uh, opacity of the, the edges of, of your mask. Where it doesn't look good is right around her legs, so we're going to go ahead and go in there and paint in white. Um, Make sure we're on our mask layer. That would always help. Paint in white to get some of that area back so it doesn't look all hazy around her legs where that mask was. Because if those feather out, it doesn't quite look that great. And I'm being picky because I wanted this to be a quick tutorial, but you get the point there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify that a little bit. I'm going to add a level levels layer right to that layer. To do that, I'm going to press the Alt button to switch between the levels. And I'm going to bring some of the, the color, make it a little bit brighter because those are supposed to be bright areas. Um, but I just don't want those highlight blowouts that we had in this image. Blowouts, no blowouts, blowouts, no blowouts, but give it a little bit of light. Looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and select the ruler tool. And if you're wondering what that noise was, I still don't have a sticky note stuck to my foot. Okay. And I'm going to straighten that out by clicking and dragging, pressing straighten. And how much time do we have? Okay, we're at nine minutes now. So I'll go ahead and process a little bit further. So I figured something out recently that I really like. Um, it's selecting the shadows and doing a curves adjustment just to the shadows. Because with HDR, you tend to lose the shadows. And that's the whole point of HDR is to bring out um, the, the high dynamic range, the, the light intensity from light to dark. But when it does that, sometimes you lose the, the great shadows that are there. And these shadows that are on the ground are just gorgeous at this uh, yeah, I said gorgeous. I'm a grown up man. I said gorgeous. Um, that this sculpture is putting on the ground. So we're going to go to go to select and go to color range. And we're just going to select the shadows. So we have the shadows selected that are in that, that image there. Now we're going to go to curves. So go to our curves adjustment layer. So now we have a curves mask of just that area that we had selected. 
and go ahead and just pull that down a little bit just to bring some of those shadows back in. Now you notice it gets kind of kind of nasty over here. That's okay because this is a mask. We can go to that mask and we can feather it to make it look like it blends a little bit more. And bam. That's like my new favorite technique I taught myself this week. And you can continue to process this further. What I would do is I'd do a noise reduction and I would do a high pass and get this looking real good. But for the sake of the tutorial, I really just wanted to get you thinking about dual processing and kind of show you my cool new trick with the um, curves. So I hope you enjoy the tutorial. If you have any questions in the future on uh, anything HDR or Photoshop related, I can probably help you. Um, email me at everydayhdr at gmail.com. Again, I am Blake Rudis, the host of Everyday HDR, and I hope this helped you. If it didn't, then you're probably pretty advanced at this HDR crap. All right, take care, guys. Have a great weekend.